Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today I'm going to have a look at this NNG SZ303 multimeter. This is a full featured multimeter. Uh, the reason I'm reviewing this is because it sells for under $10. I did order this using my own funds from AliExpress, and so I'd just like to ask that if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Questions and comments are always welcome. The feedback is really appreciated and it helps me figure out where to focus my activity. And in particular, this video is a part of a under $10 multimeter series that I'm doing. That's a result of some requests that I've had to look at meters that are a little cheaper than some of the higher end meters that I've been reviewing in the past. Now let's get in the box here. It opens up from the end. And stuff comes spilling out here. That's everything in the box. We've got a uh, manual in Chinese and another manual in English. And not a very long manual, but multimeters aren't really all that difficult to use. We'll uh, probably look at this in case we need to refer to any of the specifications. There is a set of probes and it's a set of uh, let's say more ec economical probes. The uh, probes don't really have any shroud here at the end that would be typical on, uh, on many other probes and meters. The unit itself is pretty compact and lightweight and it's got some shrink wrap around it We'll take the shrink wrap off and then get in and have a look at putting the batteries in. Meters out of the plastic wrap and we've got to put some batteries in here. The cover here is uh, latched, no screw, takes two AAA batteries, one and two, going quite easily. And then that just snaps back into place and we're done. Now we can power it up and we can see it has a nice sharp display. And just quickly, some of the initial controls. We have the uh, cell button here, which for uh, mo settings on the dial that have multiple options, this will switch. So this is switching between diode and continuity. And then this is a hold button to hold a measurement. We press that quickly, we get the H there in the corner and a long press and we have a backlight here. So it's nice to have a backlight in a sort of a budget multimeter like this. And in terms of controls, that's all there is. There's just not a lot of uh, options on this multimeter. It's fairly simple. DC voltage, I've got the multimeter set to DC voltage. I've got the calibrator outputting voltage right now zero. I connect it, still zero. Let's increase this. That's a tenth of a volt and you can see that uh, effectively almost a rounding error difference between what the calibrator is putting out and what the meter is reading. You know, ten, hundred, thousandth, so maybe one one thousandth of a volt or one millivolt difference between what we're seeing here on the display and what the calibrator is putting out. Now we'll go to one volt. Similar here at one volt, we're off by uh, one millivolt. Again, that's probably just a rounding error issue. Let's go up to five volts. Similar, just off by what should amount to a rounding error that is pretty much a match. And 10 volts, same sort of thing. So very good performance when it comes to DC voltage. Now we can also look at millivolts. I'm just gonna unplug this for a second, move to the millivolt range, set millivolts there. So right now this is reading zero, and that's reading zero as well. We'll go up, that's 10 millivolts, similar to what we saw in the voltage range. We're off by uh, really uh, the last digit 
in effect, uh, more or less a rounding error. That's uh, pretty much a good match. 20 millivolts, uh, same sort of thing. More or less the same value uh, off by what amounts to a rounding error. So very good performance in millivolts as well. Now for AC voltage, everything is connected right now. I'm using the Bryman as a bit of a reference and the two meters are showing pretty much the same thing. And we've got a little bit of ghost voltage here because the power's not on. I'll turn the power on. And within a few tenths of a volt. So for typical kinds of mains measurements, we'll just go back on here. We're within about three tenths of a volt and they're both showing pretty steady. That's a, a, a really nice showing for AC voltage. Now for resistance, the calibrator is outputting 20 ohms. We're not connected yet. I'll plug it in. And we see 20.4 ohms. That's probably well within the margin of error that we would have for a resistor anyways. Uh, very good reading here. 100 ohms, once again, off by 0.4 of an ohm. It makes it seem as though it's a slight calibration error on the unit because it's consistently off by almost the same amount. We'll go up to 1,000 ohms. 1,000 ohms, 1K. Once again, almost 1K. We're off by 3 ohms at this point. So very good reading at 1K. We'll move up to 2K. Once again, at 2K, we're off by um, 5 ohms. So it, it's a very, very good reading for resistance as well. Now we'll have a look at DC milliamps. And so the calibrator, it's currently outputting milliamps. Uh, we'll move the dial here to milliamps and plug it in. And so both showing zero right now, which is good. One milliamp. Like every other reading, this is off by essentially uh, the last digit, more or less a rounding error. Four milliamps, uh, 3.98, a very good showing. We'll go to 10 milliamps. Once again, this is off uh, by a couple of points in the last uh, position. That's pretty good for uh, 10 milliamps. We'll go up to 20 milliamps. A little more error now. Seven hundredths of a milliamp. Uh, what's that? That's 70 microamps. So uh, a very good showing here. Uh, fairly accurate in the milliamp range. This will go up to 24 milliamps max. We're seeing 23.9 for 24. Very good there. Now let's move this unit over to amps. I'll just disconnect that. We'll move over to amps. Plug it in on this side. And we're seeing 0 0.023 amps. Uh, this is outputting 24 milliamps. So it is off by a little, but once again, very good performance, especially for a meter of uh, this price range. Very, very good performance there. Now for frequency, the calibrator is putting out uh, 0.1 kilohertz or 100 hertz. I'll connect the meter. And it's showing 99.8 hertz. So off by two tenths of a, of a hertz. Very good there. We'll move up to one kilohertz, 0.998 kilohertz. Once again, very good. We'll uh, go to 10 kilohertz. We're seeing the same sort of behavior. Uh, maybe let's go to something like five kilohertz, 4.99. So really uh, what we've seen consistently on this meter over and over is that it tends to be sort of off by uh, just a tiny, tiny amount, uh, very, very close to the readings and values that are coming out of the calibrator. Diode check, I have a test box here. Let's see how this behaves. So that's a good reading. That's a good reading. That's good and lights up. That's good and lights up. Very dim light there on the green. Does not light up the blue and does not light up the clear. So the 
uh, voltage that it's putting out for the test can't light up these two diodes above uh, above two volts. And then for the short, a good reading. And so just no no tone here on the valid diodes. And if you've seen some of my other reviews, you know that I like to hear the tone when uh, a valid diode is detected. Now we'll look at continuity. I'll just put that into continuity mode. We'll start with the built-in probes. And very good performance for the built-in probes. I might not even need to switch to uh, the gold tip probes. So very good performance with the uh, continuity test on this meter. For non-contact voltage, we'll uh, set it to the NCV position. The display shows EF. And what I do is I take this plug and the hot wire is along this edge. And so that should trigger the non-contact sensor. So let's see what happens as I bring this into the, to the unit. And the sensor is usually at the top on these systems. So it's sensing something there when I'm about a centimeter away. And when I get closer, especially to the middle, when I'm right on top of the middle, I get three bars and rapid beeping. And at about half a centimeter, I get two bars. But I do get three bars reliably when I'm pretty much uh, on top of the center of the unit. So uh, it is nice to see that there is some sensitivity out here at about one centimeter. So that's pretty reasonable performance for a uh, non-contact voltage sensor uh, and better than many units that I've tested. Quick look inside here. The battery compartment is actually hardwired to the main circuit board which is unusual. Most of these units that I've been looking at these days use spring clips or some other kind of uh, force contact. There is a little bit of a, a bumper here, probably to keep the display from falling out. Then if we look in here a little more closely, we can see there's a, a PTC there and a capacitor. So there's some limited amount of input protection. The uh, unit is labeled here as an XT32A. V1. We'll have to kind of cross-reference that on the internet, see if we can find out more information. The main uh, chip that's used to operate the unit is obscured, so we can't tell what that is. That's becoming, it seems, more and more common, where we can't really get any information on that. And then the non-contact sensor is the this little fine wire that we see that comes around to the top. So that explains the uh, the decent performance that we saw with the non-contact voltage. In summary, this is an excellent multimeter when you consider it sells for less than $10. The accuracy is excellent and is generally off by a single digit in most modes. Continuity was very good using the included probes. Non-contact voltage performed better than many other meters costing about 10 times more. Capacitance is the only commonly available measurement that is absent. There is very little input protection with only a single PTC and no fuse. The included probes, although good for continuity, are a disappointment in an otherwise excellent package. This is the best under $10 meter that I have tested so far. As I've mentioned before, the accuracy really is excellent. For someone that needs to perform the occasional electrical measurement or two when troubleshooting around the house, this would be a perfectly fine meter. Given the low price and excellent accuracy, I would also be willing to recommend this to someone starting out in electronics as a hobby. The operator's manual suggests it was designed to handle CAT3 and CAT4, however, that seems unlikely given the limited protection internal to the unit and the nature of the probes that have no sheath on the uh, tips. I wouldn't consider using this for anything past CAT2. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
Thanks for watching, and until next time.